Thank God, you, God man. bless you, Love man. You, man. God, God has blessed you. Go prove it. Yeah, I'm waiting know. for the best from you, man. I'm waiting. All this other bullshit you've been doing is a warm up. You ain't see. Hold up, man. You 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 don't know who coming to town. I'm tired. Let, I'm let tired of seeing you let spend all something. your time warming up. I'm 85 percent better once I get in front of people. My life is in front of people. I, I don't know nothing about choking and folding. I get, man, you wait. I hope it's 30,000 people out there. Hey, let me tell you something, Grant. I don't know who next, but they better have this stuff together. Hey, man. God damn, man. I've been asking you guy, can you see me? Can you hear me? And he wouldn't talk to me. He's scared. What? What's wrong with him, man? Plain Jane. Ask Plain Jane what's wrong with him. Well, see, you're making too much money. Let me see if I need to prop this Dude, up. Dude, he something. don't he don't need to gravitate away from that. He needs to move toward that. Oh, he hungry, man. He he hungry. He just respectful. That's all it is. Well, dude, dude, you can't be. You're not respectful if you don't talk to a guy. <laughs> I'm like, man, what is this? This guy can't see. He can't hear. I know. No, hey, I Greg, know. Hey, Greg. He been he been on Instagram. He been looking at your airplane. He been looking at your new roles. Bring him back on here. I want to talk to him a second. Hey, BD. Yeah, BD. Come on, man. God dang, hey, dog. Left me rejected, hey, feeling disappointment, rejection, discouragement. <laughs> One little dude almost took me down, ruined my day, Mr. Harvey. Oh, hold on, man. They are going to get him. Hey, we're going to have been, man? We're, we're going to have a great time. Oh man, I'm excited. What's the most people you've ever talked to in, in a live audience at one time? In a live audience? Probably, uh... Don't exaggerate, man. No, nah, I kid you not. Maybe. you talking about on motivational? Uh, 5, in, anyway, 5,000? 5,000. Now, guess. tour dates, that's different. How big is that? Man, you looking good today. I got to tell you, you look rich. 44,000. I got a little money coming in. 44,000. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, how date. long was how long was your presentation? Uh Let's see. Uh total about 40 minutes. All right. Well, well we got 30 We got 35,000 people for 3 days. Place is going to be packed, my friend. Where you where where you holding everything at? Miami Marlins Stadium, one of the newer stadiums in the country. You're not going to be be there to see it probably, but I'm I'm <laughs> Okay, you stupid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, shit else to do with your money. <laughs> Grant, you going Yeah, man. I bet been... Okay, so look if I don't make it, gonna... hey, if I don't make it, I need you to carry the show, though. I'm, I'm depending <laughs> on you. Let's talk about what you're going to do, what you want to talk about, and what you're excited about. Why, first of all, why did you agree to come do this thing with me? Well, you know, man, you've appeared on my talk show uh, several times. And every time you left, I was just really kind of blown away with your level of enthusiasm and commitment to helping people get successful. And I just I just knew, I said, man, this is the type of guy that I really want to hang around with because I, li I like people that are of that, you know, that 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 level of thinking. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, it's, it's one thing to make money, but to help others do it is, is like a pretty cool thing. And so after, after you left my show a couple of times, I said, hey, man, I, one day, one day I'm gonna hook up with this guy. And so when you asked me to come and do the conference, I mean, I, I didn't hesitate. I said, man, this is an opportunity to align myself with one of the top motivational speakers, dream builders in the country. I'm a, you know, relatively a pup in this business right here. I said, it'd be a great learning opportunity. I've done a lot of motivational speaking, but I wanted to see how it was done on the level you did it. And so here I am. Yeah, well, if you're a pup, man, you'd be, you'd be like one of those big mastiffs. You're going to be like, the biggest freaking mastiff, <laughs> if you're a puppy. Look, I, I admire your, one of the reasons I wanted to have you here is I admire your ability to be in probably the most competitive space on the planet, which is entertainment. Yeah. And to be such a relevant icon for such a long period of time. 
one of the things I'm going to be asking you about there, that with your permission, Mr. Harvey, yeah, is how that. does a Come guy on. stay so relevant, so hot for so long? Uh, it- the key for me has been reinvention. Uh-huh. I've constantly reinvented myself. You cannot be afraid to change because one thing for sure, change is inevitable. Mm. So you got two things that can happen in change. You can, you can, you can react to the change or you can participate in the change. Mm. I always choose to participate in the change. Mm-hmm. If you react to change, you're always behind the eight ball. So I try to get out front to be, uh, to reinvent myself. I got, I kind of like see the end coming before it get here. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's, it's like being on the train and knowing it's going to slam into the wall, but you sit on the train anyway. No, I'm going to dive off into the nearest river, creek, lake, or I'm going to roll down a hill. But I'm not going to ride into this wall. And so reinvention has been the key for me. I've never been afraid to uh, reinvent myself and, 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 and to try new things. I love that. I love that because uh, there's going to be 35,000 people that all are aware that they're on a train that, that has a track that's only so long. Yeah, man. And to sit there and never jump off that train, knowing that that train does not go forever. Nobody's on a train that goes forever. Yeah, The end is coming to all train rides. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But to sit on that train, knowing that this ride ends, it, it, that to me, man, has got to be the craziest thing I've ever heard. So, and it's a sad thing to watch people sit there. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think people need to do today? Whether they're coming to this conference or sitting at home and they see this on YouTube or Facebook, what do you think people need to do, Steve, and maybe what have you done to transition for, for the end of whatever thing that you're, whether it's radio, TV, business, et cetera? First things first, you've got to come anywhere with an open mind. You've got to be open to receive. Because, see, you, you know, there's a scripture that says faith comes from hearing, not from having heard. So you've got to be in a place where you can hear the information. And it may be something that you've heard over and over and over in your life. But when you hear it at a particular time, at a particular place, that's what clicks the switch for you. That's why it's necessary. Sometimes you got to hear something over and over and over again for it to click. I remember all the stuff my mom and dad taught me when I was growing up. I didn't pay no attention to it. But all of a sudden, I heard that same message when I got older and it clicked. It's like, bam. That's it, because I heard it at the right time and I had an open mind. So when I had the open mind, Mm -hmm. I heard it differently and it changed my whole being. And the repetition thing, like, you know, did you feel like because you didn't respond to whatever you heard the first time that you're a dummy or like you're a failure or it didn't work? Or do you think those earlier times were actually just preparation for the time it did work? Yeah, man. I mean, look, man, you, you're not a dummy if you don't get it the first time. Yeah. You're not a dummy if you don't get it the third time. You become a dummy if you don't ever get it. <laughs> oh, See, my God, dude. You're going to be so good. That's that's your problem. Oh, you my don't God. Ever get it because it comes at a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. Everything happens in its time. Mm-hmm. You know, you can see a girl walking by in high school and you never notice her. You saw her in junior high. You never saw saw her. But all of a sudden, you're in the workforce, and this girl has transformed. And all of it's the same girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, you see her now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, how many times has that happened? Yeah. And 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 that's just the way it works, man. So it's about the timing of it all. You know, the stuff my mother and father was trying to beat into my hard head when I was young. I wasn't ready to receive it. Even if I'd have got the information, what was I going to apply it to? Yeah, you Hell, didn't I didn't have a business. Uh-huh. I didn't have a family. I was stupid. I, I mean, come on, man. You're going to take all this brilliant information and, and give it to a 15-year-old little stupid kid? No. But when I got 45 uh-huh. and I had all of the stuff I needed, the message was crystal clear. Yeah. And you and I are about the same age. So, so you're, the last 15 years have been big game changers for you. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So what would you say to the people there? Because I think everybody thinks Steve Harvey's just the super rich guy. You know, he's, he's got all the phantom. How many different roles you got now? 
Well, look, man. I know, I know you were buying matching phantoms for the wife the last time I was in Atlanta. I'm like, why would anybody do that? <laughs> you know. Got to do, got to do something. Yeah, you, you can't take it with you, so. Yeah. You know, but, but. You, can spend like, it like, you, you, you can't take none of it with you, but. Yeah. Here's the deal, man. It's, 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 uh, people look at me and they see one thing. They have no idea the process, though. Yeah, yeah. I've been processed, man. Mm, mm. That's the thing. I got processed. So through the process, I learned a lot of very necessary lessons. Now, here's the deal. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm learning from you. It's some things I'm getting from this moment right here. I'm, I'm learning from you. I'm always an open mind to learn new things. But, but what you gotta do, man, is you can't let age be a factor. Mm -hmm. Why would I care the fact that I'm 62 years old? Why would I let that stop me from being successful or changing or growing at 62? Uh -huh. You know, uh, Colonel Sanders. Yeah, good example. Had been telling people he fried the best chicken in the world his whole life. He didn't get his first franchise till he was in his 60s. KFC. Yeah, yeah. There was more fried chicken than anybody in the world. They everywhere. They in Dubai, they in Africa, uh -huh. they in China. This dude was in his 60s before he got a franchise. So why can't we have that type of success? You know, age is, age is not the parameter for success. Now, I do believe it take a long time to make a lot of money. You know, you can't just run out here and go, you know, in three months, I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm that, buying that, a Gulf Stream this weekend. Yeah, probably not going to happen. Yeah. But you can get the tools to get started that way. So, so look, I, I think a lot of people think maybe Steve Harvey grew up rich and famous. Like, you want to clear that up? Where, where'd you grow <laughs> up and what'd you grow up with? And did okay, anybody know right you? right here. My daddy was a coal miner. My father made $5 a day. <sighs> he had five kids. I was born in a coal mine in town in Welch, West Virginia. I grew up the first time I flushed the toilet, I was five years old. I never saw a sink with a faucet on it till I was five years old. The first time I saw a toilet flush, I was five. I grew up country city. I had to go back to West Virginia to work my uncle's and grandfather's farm all the way up until I was 16. So I was city country, city country. I grew up very poor. Uh, I flunked out of school. I've been homeless. I lived in a car for three years. I got my first car in my name. The first car I ever put in my name was a used car, and I got it at 38. I was wow. 38 years old before I ever had a car in my name God. registered to me. Every wow. car I ever had, my dad gave it to me. And that was after he had put 280-some thousand miles on it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that was my life. And my first car was 38. Uh, I wrote on a piece of paper when I was 10, I was going to be on TV. Uh, but you got to wait sometimes for things to turn out. I didn't get on TV till I was 38. Wow. So with my first TV check, I bought me a car. <laughs> you know, that's something I never had. I was living in one before that, but I didn't even own that. And so, you know, I've been through all the ups and downs. I've been at every economic level there is. I've been, uh -huh. grew up poor, but I've been at, and I mean, when you're homeless, man, you ain't got little enough. So I've been at all the economic levels. I'm doing really well for myself right now, but I'm even still learning that part of it. You know, it's things that I, cause I didn't have a teacher. You know, I didn't have nobody that tell me, man, when you make this much money, you ought to do this with it. I've been, I've been trying to figure this thing out, man. And you know, people out here in Hollywood, they not, this is not the friendliest group out here. You know, they don't, they don't come to your rescue out here in Hollywood. That's yeah. not what they do. Hey, Steve, you need to be learn more about money. Come and sit. No, they don't. That's not what they do out here. They find ways to extract the money that you make it, <laughs> but ain't nobody sitting you down telling you how to get more. Nobody. Well, man, I, I appreciate your willingness to share your story and, and your experience and what's worked with, you know, for you. Uh, I look forward to spending some time with you. Very generous for you with as busy as you are Super Bowl weekend. Because uh, I think you leave me and then you're going to do something at the Super Bowl Saturday, right? Is that live or has that already been t televised? Yes, or, Saturday is live. I do the NFL Honors Saturday. Yeah. Good and, they, and they tried to get me uh, 
to forego the Friday and the Thursday because they want to do rehearsals. Yeah. But I said, no, nah, I got a date with my buddy Greg Cardone. I got to go to Miami, man. We got to we got to shake some trees down there together. We we're, we're in a life changing business with people. So well, I'll, hey, be, I'll be able to do the gig anyway. They gave me some leeway. And then you said something to me the last time I called uh, that we were on the phone together. And it was really, really I, I don't exactly remember how you said it, Jared. Maybe you can. Your, your career is what pays the bills and... Your career is what you paid for. Yeah, yeah. Your calling is what you made for. Mm. And so people like yourself, you have a calling. See, you make money, there's nothing wrong with that. But your calling is you have to teach other people how to do it. See, we have a responsibility. You can't get a big house up on the hill and then don't tell nobody else how to get up on the hill. You can't do that, man. That's not that's not how you get blessed. That's not how this game really, really works. Right. So part of your calling, part of my calling, is kind of spread the good news of how it's done. And my whole mission is, I'm, I'm an expert at one thing. I'm not an expert at making money. I'm not an expert at investing money. I'm not an expert on how to get money but I am an expert on mindset. Mm. I know how to get my mindset to accomplish just about anything. And so when I come down there to Miami, man, my whole mission is to talk about mindset. You gotta get your mindset in order to accomplish anything. Now the particulars of what you do with this mindset, you wanna grow tomatoes and try to become a millionaire, that's cool. But I'm gonna show you how to get your mindset to grow these tomatoes to make this million dollars. Or you can you can make diapers and make a million dollars. There's people cutting hair make a million dollars. I know a dude I think you'll make more money with the hair. diapers than the tomatoes, actually. I don't know. You know, I don't really know, but you know, if I could, let me tell you something, Grant. If I could find a way to make this money selling tomatoes, and I could get off the radar and like go places that nobody knew me, and you know live on international waters and don't pay taxes like some people I know, that's that's what I do. Yeah, well, you can't make money without being on the radar though, man. I can't. So it's, it, you and know, man, as much is given, much is required, so. So look, man, I appreciate you coming down to do this. Uh, uh, I know it's your calling. It's definitely my calling to help and give back. And, and so I'm really, you know, uh, you know, just humbled that you're willing to come down and do this. I think this is going to be the first of many things we do. I'm planning this international thing. And, and I, every time really? we have some conversations about it, I think about Steve Harvey, how we can go to Africa together, how we can go to Asia together. We're going to do some things together, man. Now you're talking, man. That's all part of the master plan. 2019, man, for everybody can be the best year of your life. But you got to live your life in expectation of that. And I've already claimed it 2019. And you, you just spoke something. Right there, man. We're going to go to Africa, man. We're going to go to UAE. We're going to go to China. We're going to go global, man. Yeah. We're going to be the biggest thing out there walking. Me and you, man. Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> Ebony and Ivory. Motivational it, tool. I'm not Ivory, man. You, Which one am I? Well, you Paul McCartney. I'm Stevie Wonder. You're not really Ivory. You're not really white. Well, hell, no, I ain't really I'm black. Italian, man. I'm Italian. <laughs> I know a lot about tomatoes. Okay, brother. Hey, God bless you, man. Can't wait to see you. It's going to be freaking phenomenal. And and uh, again, I'm just humbled that you that you accepted our request to be part of this. And and I and and truly, I don't do anything one time, Steve. When I find something that works, I do it a thousand times. Hey, man, let's do it. I'm excited, man. Looking forward to meet everybody down there, man. We're gonna have a great time, and we're gonna change some lives, man. Let's do it. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate. You. I want you to have an experience that you will never, ever forget. We want to make this a big event for you. Our goal is to change your lives. This is what you have to go through. Anybody can be 1x or 2x. To get to these multipliers, I mean to blow the roof off of your life and career to 10x in your business. The greatest entrepreneurial conference on the planet. And last year, I, didn't, I was in the negative, and now I'm here, man, I turned my business around, and now I'm trying to get to that next level. We went from sleeping on an office floor six years ago to now running a multi-million pound business, all from Grant's material. Ten X your lives. Ten X.
touch the lives of the people around you. Give more than you take and I promise you, you will get more than you ever dreamed of.